Oh, Fuckland, it is good to be back. I've been on a boat, and while I was gone, the whole NFL world went nuts. We're talking about it all today. This is a super fun show. Make sure you like, subscribe, tell your friends. Enjoy the off season because we don't usually get them quite like this. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday, March 22nd, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back with you, Mike Wright. What was Jason Moore. It's what good is, to be back. What is this Andy voice? Holloway. I don't know. <laughs> Trying it on for size. I'm just excited to have the gang back together. Uh, did you get to ride a Megalodon on your journeys? Uh, if I mean, the boat was a Megalodon. I had a wonderful uh, family cruise. It was great. And then you've been you've been hankering for a cruise for years. Yeah, 17 years since since my uh, honeymoon. And then I finally, finally got back on a boat. I never thought I'd be on a boat, but um, but you were. And then I missed two shows, and the whole <laughs> the whole NFL world explodes. I'm old enough to remember. Just because you timed your cruise up with free agency. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is true. Uh, but do you guys remember when it was crazy that Tom Brady unretired and Amari Cooper was yeah. traded? Yeah. Wow. That was last week. But oh that my feels gosh. like old news. That is old, unimportant news now. My favorite part of you returning from your vacation was in the last few days you've tried to like break <laughs> news to us of things that were multiple days old yeah. like in the bust, slack channel yeah you were like dude guys chandler jones to the raiders <laughs> 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 and we're like yeah man that was we have this that was a thing. week ago okay, so we can let the foot clan in yeah why don't we share what how we handle our news yes. sources oh, so yes. in our company slack we are all trying to make sure that we have the latest and greatest information <laughs> and, and we try to shefter each other oh, absolutely we want to be first and if you are second or if you post something after someone else has already shared it that is a big faux pas around yes. these parts and you get quote body bag <laughs> we we have a we have a custom gift put him in a body bag and we will body bag you if you post information <laughs> so my my repost of the chandler jones was so old they didn't even know what to do it was like new, what's the new statute grounds. of limitations on a week old news breaking story um but that's what happens when you leave the country that's right that's right and mike did you have a good weekend did you have I, a nice weekend? I did. You, know, you just kind of chilled out. So you did another AMA on Twitter. I did. Those yeah. are it's a good time, man. When you're yeah. just like sitting on the patio. What should I do now? I know. I'll just communicate with the Foot Clan. I uh, I had a good weekend. I, I shot myself in the eyeball with WD forty. I did see that. There was many notes. Um, which I'd never done before. Have either of you ever done no, that? No, I never have, partook. I haven't tried that. How is it? Should I try it? Uh, it was. <laughs> It was uh, not good. How many one to five stars? Uh, zero stars. Oh. <laughs> I I went. It was great too because it's one of those things where it's like uh, and I don't I don't know what movie it is, but it's like the what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Moment. Okay. Yeah. Because I uh, clearly, if if you want to know how it happened, I was really close to a hinge, and I shot right into the hinge, and it just shot right back oh, out. Okay. Okay. Into my eye at a very high rate of speed. And then I ran to the sink and I started throwing water in my eye and I'm asking somebody else That's the right move. To tell me what the container says you're supposed to do for your eye. I imagine it says wash immediately. Which is it's kind of ironic, right? They have instructions for the emergency of your eye, but how would you ever be able to read it? Ooh. If you spray you gotta your, read before. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta check out your eye eye safety beforehand. Uh so very similar to your cruise. Had a really good time. Uh, what else is going on? We've got Al Borland in the building today. What's up, Foot Clan? Yeah, he's doing all right. Um, actually, we'll check in with you later, okay? Because I, when <laughs> I bet we, you will. <laughs> when we get to the news about a certain someone, I want to know how you reacted. You can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to watch the show, Twitter at the FF ballers, the communities join the foot.com. If you want to support the show and get an extra episode right now or twice a week. So you want a third episode, 
head over to jointhefoot.com and you can check that out. We also have the Ultimate Draft Kit available at ultimatedraftkit.com. Uh, you guys ready to get into the news? So much news. News and notes from around the league. Nothing happened. <laughs> it's a standard run-of-the-mill week at the NFL. Uh, let's start with Devontae Adams. This was supposed to – I mean, this is now older news. Right. But Devontae Adams was traded to the Raiders in exchange for 2022 first and second round picks, immediately signed the highest paying contract in the history of the wide receiver position, $141.25 million. <sighs> Oh, man. Uh, it, it was said that this is his lifelong dream to play for the Raiders. Shock throughout the world. Shock to the Packer fans like Al Borland. How did you feel about this? Like Jason, I was I was not out of the country, but I was moving, so I was very disconnected uh, the last week. And I, I saw this come up in Slack, and, and my initial reaction was just... Ha, I, ha, I, ha, ha, ha. No, no, I wanted to die. Oh, um, okay. But I just didn't understand... Like why? Like why we're securing Aaron Rodgers and then trading off Devonte Adams? But and then it comes out afterwards that we offered more than the Raiders did. Yeah, that Devonte Adams wanted out. He would rather go play on a poor or a not, not a not a poor team, but on a worse record. You know, worse quarterback, uh, tough division. The, we, where the Packers, if Devontae stays, just owns that division. Yeah. They're auto in. Everything is great. And he's like, no, I've spent so much time with Aaron Rodgers. I would really love to go and play with my college quarterback. Yeah. I mean, there, we don't know. I know that the, the word that got out was that they offered more money. But from what I've read, there's a strong possibility that the guaranteed money in the deal from Las Vegas may have been greater. This had also been a situation that soured over the course of many months. Yes. So um, they hadn't done what they needed to do to kind of, you know, we, when you have the best wide receiver in football and all the media and all the courting is about the quarterback and you pay him that money. I, don't, I just don't know what happened there, but Adams and Derek Carr were collegiate teammates. Like you said, they're going to be reunited. And from what I understand, this is more of a move looking long term saying, hey, we're going to do, you know, five, six years together as opposed to really this Rodgers deal. This extension is probably a two year deal mm -hmm. for Aaron Rodgers. So now there are so many questions that come out of this move. Yeah. Like what is Brian Edwards value now? <laughs> now that Devontae Adams has taken his spot over. Um, so get, let's start with Devontae. He, yeah, he gets to learn. It took Devontae Adams quite a while to it did. get good. Um, but let's talk about Devontae Adams' fantasy value. It obviously takes a hit. You're, you're no, no matter what, you're not going to score as many touchdowns with Derek Carr as you do with Aaron Rodgers. He's still going to be the dude. And that's one thing that I really like about the destination is I would expect his target, you know, his target share to be phenomenal here. It is helpful to me that they have the change at the head coach position going into the season. If it was the same type of routines that we've seen in Las Vegas, if it was Gruden, um, I'd be more concerned about utilizing Devontae Adams uh, to the maximum. Now, it's it's hard because you look at this move, it is a downgrade of some capacity, maybe not a lot, but you know, Derek Carr is the only one whose fantasy value improves in this transaction. Right. Rodgers goes down, Adams goes down, Wallers goes down, Renfro's goes down. It's hard to argue that it, from a fantasy perspective, was a boost. Yeah, I mean, wide receiver one for the Packers goes way up. The question is, who is that going to be? Are they going to draft someone? Will they trade for a veteran? Is it just Alan Lazard? No. Um, as of right now, as of right now, it is. The answer is, yeah, it's Alan Lazard. But I would, if I was in a dynasty league with Alan Lazard, I'd be playing that tune to the and trading him away. Oh, for sure. Uh, so. Derek Carr, it, go, it does go up for Derek Carr. And Derek Carr has had fantasy relevance at times in the past. You have to believe they're going to utilize... I mean, throwing the ball to Renfro, Waller, and Adams is a... That's solid. That's arguably up there with the best tandems in the league. I mean, I was kind of saying, you want to throw the ball to Waller and Devontae Adams or Tyree Kill and Kelsey? Like, it's close. Sure. So... Now, it, for, for Adams' value... 
looking at what Derek Carr has done, you know, you yes, it's chicken or egg of what it will Carr be now that he has a truly elite wide receiver. But the most touchdowns he's ever thrown in a single season, that was way back in his sophomore year. It was 32. That's the only time he's that ever. That was Carr, Carr uh, I'm sorry, Crabtree right. and, and uh, that was, Cooper. Yeah, part of my point is Derek Carr has only surpassed 30 passing touchdowns once. And it's not that he hasn't had weapons around him. Like those years with Crabtree and Amari Cooper, like it's a it's a funny thing now to think back of what what Michael Crabtree was, but there was a couple year run where Michael Crabtree was one of the better wide receivers in the NFL, and he was able to pair him with a young Amari Cooper. Derek Carr was really never able to get to like fully unlock the fantasy value of Amari Cooper uh, to to be what we had hoped for what Amari Cooper was coming out of uh, college. So it is. It's definitely a downgrade for Adams. I but, don't think Carr is a top, you know, five, top ten quarterback because of right. this. But it, you know, we've talked so much about this division. You're you're going to have to keep up with Herbert, Mahomes, and Russell Wilson. Yes. So the the script is going to have to change. It can't be Josh Jacobs between the tackles twenty two times. You're going to get run out of the building in every one of those games. Yeah. Prior to this trade, we were looking at. Uh, Cooper Cup and Devontae Adams has basically won two off the board for right. fantasy football. Um, now it's just a matter of how far does he fall to you? And I'm, I'm going to throw out some yeah, names let's do it. Let's do and, it. and see uh, who you would rather have. We all have Cup ahead of him now. Yes, Cup, okay. Cup is one. Jamar Chase or Devontae Adams? Give me Chase. Wow. I think it's Chase. I yeah. would go Chase as well. Justin Jefferson? Jefferson. Or Jeff Devontae Jefferson. Adams. Now that okay. Kirk is back for sure. Tyreek Hill? Or Devontae Adams. I think that's my line. I think you would take I, I think Adams. that's where it's interesting. It's very close there. I will go Hill. I would as well. Keep um, going for us then, yeah, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Debo Samuel. I'll take uh, Devontae. Okay. Stephon Diggs. Devontae. A.J. Brown. Devontae. Yeah, there's, I'm not there's sure my that line. I'm Devontae over those guys. But that's, really? That, yeah. Even A.J. Brown. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I well, we're gonna stat everybody out for the yeah. the ultimate draft kit once the, you know f rookies have gone everywhere. Um, so I I don't know I don't know where the chips will fall, but I could see him being at the end of that group of you know all of those wide receivers are great. Your quarterback does matter, and and so it's a it's a huge downgrade uh, for him. Thankfully, dynasty wise, he got a big old bag, and he'll be whatever he is this year. I think he's gonna be for. Uh, you know, a handful of more years. Darren Waller's target pace was 143 targets last year. Obviously missed some time with injuries, but that was his pace. That comes down, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. has to. And he's never been a huge touchdown guy. Oh, he's been volume. So, I mean, he had nine touchdowns in 2020. That's his career high. Never been double digits. Only two last year. So, without volume... I don't think he takes a massive hit here because... Okay. He got to a place last year where he was it. I mean, I know Renfro's great, and but people, uh, teams are not designing, you know, double coverage for the, the slot guy and Hunter Renfro. They were trying to get rid of Darren Waller, and you just don't do that now. Waller is not the weapon that you are scheming against, and mm -hmm. you give that kind of talent and athleticism and size a one-on-one -on -one cover. You get him yeah, against to... the wrong matchup, and, and he could have a very – uh, good fantasy season still. All right. Um, shall we move forward yep. beyond Devontae Adams? Because there's a lot. All right, Deshaun Watson. This was the headline maker. It looked like, we even said it on the show, because he said it to the Browns, that they were eliminated from contention and it was yes. going to be the Falcons or the Panthers. Instead, Deshaun Watson had a change of heart. Uh, uh, Deshaun yeah. Watson's banker had a change of heart. Yeah. And... He was traded to the Browns. The Browns get Watson and a fifth round pick. The Texans get three firsts, a third, and a fourth round pick. It is a f and then they restructured his contract to be five years, two hundred thirty million, all guaranteed, Oof. with a one million dollar base in the first year, which may huh. gross, huh. which may mean that his suspension is not impactful to his pocketbook. Correct. Which does mean that we don't know what kind of suspension he will get. I have settled on a word for the situation. Oh, let's hear it. The word is disturbing. 
Yeah, okay. Totally. And, and, and so that's the word I'm going to use to describe it. And, and that's not me saying that I know every detail for every circumstance or every situation. Sure. But for whatever reason, you know, when you're a franchise quarterback, the demand was there. Yes. He's going to make a ton of money. He's going to play football for the Browns. They will be trading Baker Mayfield away. They do not want that in the locker room. Um, and they signed Jacoby Brissett to basically fill in for whatever sort of suspension Deshaun Watson is going to face. Fallout. <laughs> so yeah. Discussing Watson is very difficult. Uh, you know, just speaking for me personally, of generally on this show, you know, we if something off the field happens. You give the news on it, and it's like you don't really have to elaborate. It's just here's so and so has a DUI that turns into usually a two game suspension, and let's what are the football ramifications of that? But this circumstance, I it's so difficult to remove the off field and just talk football for Deshaun Watson because everything that's involved, like. There are 20 plus women who will forever live with whatever happened in the in the room with Deshaun Watson and now Watson's going to a new place with a new contract a hundred because of the uh, disturbing part is yes. is the extra 100 million dollars he received would not have happened without Correct. these allegations that was a winning bid to yes. get his services because he was on the block so it's like that's just it doesn't feel good no, when it's it feels like really wait, bad. he got an extra large the largest guaranteed money of all time not in spite of, but actually in a way because yes. of the situation. So that is gross. Um, but now we know he's a Brown. Now we know yeah. he's going to play football. Uh, a suspension will come down almost definitely. It will almost definitely be six games to start. And when when that happens, don't yeah, know. I imagine, well, will the NFL take the perspective of letting all legal matters be sorted before they do that? I Probably, imagine so, yes. yes. They already have had that stance so i can't imagine they would change okay and but like, haven't there been other situations that haven't come to completion where they did make the proactive step of i guess the big difference now and the difference that caused the trade is that he was um you know the the grand jury there will be no criminal charges right and so maybe that allows them to make their decision quicker well amari cooper was traded to cleveland yes J uh, jarvis landry was cut david and joku was extended um, uh, Austin Hooper was cut. Uh, Deshaun Watson is a monumental upgrade on the field for the Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference in what he can provide from a, from a fantasy perspective versus Baker Mayfield is massive. And, you know, I already was kind of okay with Cooper going to Cleveland just because of all the places he could have gone. He could have gone and been a clear two. He's the guy on the outside. And... With Watson arriving, he should have volume, um, and then you have you do have some peripheral options that are going to be interesting, like David Njoku or Harrison Bryant. Yeah, how would you feel about Amari Cooper if Will Fuller shows up? Like if Will Fuller is signed, because I've seen some you know links there. Obviously, they played together in Houston, and he is a free agent, and they need another wide receiver. Would you still view? Him as like the clear one on the outside for the team. I, certainly, from a volume perspective, I would. Um, it, it wouldn't really. It doesn't detract me any more than Donovan Peoples Jones going deep. It would just be somebody to take that job. That's how I view it. Yeah, let's hope Stefanski. Now, I guess this. What we're gonna see was was the run, run, run the ball motif. The right Baker was that was sure. that like well Baker's our quarterback so. Uh, hand the ball off I mean, or I, I think they still will be run heavy I mean it's you know but that didn't stop like Kirk Cousins from having success in that offense when if you have competent quarterback play and you have competent weapons the, it, it'll work out yeah and, and the truth is is whether you're the like the Rams had to make a change at quarterback because in games that you were down golf couldn't get you there right the Browns aren't going to have the choice to be a running team if they're down three scores to Lamar Jackson they need someone that can bring them back. Yep. Watson represents that. And we were talking at lunch. This is actually going to end up, I mean, far beyond this show, it's going to be one of the most difficult fantasy decisions, all of the players on the Browns. You're not going to feel great about, you know, as great about Nick Nick Chubb if it's six games of Brissett. You're not going to feel as good about Cooper 
or Njoku, any of those players, even Watson, where he goes in drafts, if there's a suspension there. So the the kind of value change that happens, you know, when you hear a player's injured for four weeks and you're like, oh, where does he belong in the draft? Well, he goes down a round or two because you're missing a good chunk of the fantasy season. Those type of things are going to come up in Cleveland. Yeah, we'll have to wait to see if by the draft season for fantasy, do we know whether the suspension is coming or does it look like it's going to be delayed? It could be a Zeke situation That's, where I was it's look, delayed for a little while. I looked it up. It was So the, the Zeke suspension was back in 2017, and it didn't happen until week 10. Yeah. So <clears throat> TBD. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you there's a situation where Watson doesn't, bear any of it this year right so um any other discussions from that transaction well you're on baker watch now where baker mayfield is going to end up will not be in cleveland um there's been on links to seattle carolina needs a quarterback i don't think it's impossible that he's a backup at this, this point, year at this point it it will be tough because the locations are running out because the Atlanta Falcons traded Matthew Ryan to the Indianapolis Colts for a third-round pick. So that destination is out of the running here for Baker Mayfield, at least to be a starting quarterback. I can't imagine they'll trade for him to be a backup. Uh, so the open spots, Seattle is wide open. And then if you look around the landscape, Detroit could use Baker Mayfield. Like You know Jared Goff is not the answer. Baker Mayfield is probably not the answer. Probably a, probably a quarterback is better than definitely not. So maybe they make a run at him. But I'm, I agree, Jason. That <laughs> they, if Jimmy Garoppolo still probably needs to be traded, and we're running out of teams for a starting quarterback. So at well, this, Baker is running out of time. And it's interesting, just from a high level perspective, because I think one of the things I've learned over the years. Obviously, we're not in the rooms with the GMs. But we've had enough candid access to some of these rooms where it's like, oh, they are reacting with the news the way that the public is. And you wonder about moves like Pittsburgh, right? Would, would, would Pittsburgh have made the commitment to Mitchell? Do they prefer him? Would they have, if Baker was on the table? How about the I can't imagine they'd trade Baker in the division, though. Right. Or, or the commanders, right? Where right. they make yeah, their Yeah, that move. was the one I thought about. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> do you oh, have, yes. How much regrets do you have? <laughs> My bet is Carolina. I think Carolina makes – they're the most desperate, right? They have been chasing this position and been behind the eight ball every step of the way. So, yeah, Matt Ryan to the Colts. I, I don't know who to give credit to, the Falcons or Matt Ryan himself, but this wasn't a media battle. This wasn't getting – you know, they didn't sell him down the river and say, oh, no, we just want you back. They did – they went all in on Deshaun Watson. They lost, and then they did right by Matt Ryan, in my opinion. I agree. Um, so credit where credit's due. Ryan said that he, he you know, he op okayed the Colts because they are a team that can win now. And this is great news for the fantasy assets there. Yes. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr., I mean, pity city. It's, yes. It, it's back on. I think you couldn't have dreamed for a much better situation uh, for Pittman than being able to get a very competent, good leader um, for a solid, well-built team. Yeah, Matt Ryan goes from the Atlanta Falcons, who on uh, Pro Football Focus, their offensive line, like end-of-season rankings, the Falcons finished 27th compared to the Colts, who were a top-12 blocking unit. They, That's yeah, the game in it, or they finished at number 12, according to PFF. Mike Davis... Uh, behind the line right. to Jonathan Taylor. Like, it's a line. massive upgrade for Matt Ryan. Yeah, that I hadn't realized the difference. I knew it was a better line, but that is a a big gap. And, and Matt, if if Matt Ryan has protection, he can. I think he can still be a. Hold on, let me say this a different way. If Philip Rivers has protection, <laughs> he can still. If Carson Wentz has, they are. Did they do a deal with the devil when they got Peyton? Where like they were going to be condemned to the veteran quarterback every off season for the rest of their life. Well, they they did have Andrew Luck. Well, but that was stolen from them. <laughs> I mean, they have. If you're Indianapolis, I mean, Matt Ryan is as good, if not better, than the two options in the previous two years. I'd say I, better. I think he's better, f flat out. I think he's better than. He's uh, more consistent than Carson Wentz. Philip Rivers that they yeah, had, yeah. and 
Yeah, Carson Wentz, yeah, is way too all over the place. Marcus Mariota was quick to take advantage of the absence in Atlanta. He signed a two-year deal with the Falcons. He may be the starter. Yeah. I would assume. Like, are they off the table then for Baker in your mind with this transaction? I, I think so. I, yeah, probably. This, this happened in a time when Baker was available. Right. They chose Mariota. I think that they still look at a quarterback in the draft. Um not that they will draft one, but they'll at least uh, they're not going to avoid that situation because of Marcus Mariota. Um, I think we talked in the office, the right approach would be the two year suck approach, yeah, which like they are on path for. <laughs> I mean, they have done a great job of setting up their 2023 draft pick because their O line sucks. Their wide receiver core do it they does, have it? It does not uh, exist. Frank Darby is there, everybody. Dynasty <laughs> Leagues. Oh, Pick man. up Frank Darby, please. That is – it's literally the worst wide receiver group I think I can ever remember. And obviously, they are going to draft someone, and they got to – they have to sign – they have to have – I think they take the first quarterback off the board. I really do. They're at pick number eight, so it, it, I think they'll take the first off the could board. happen. And that person will compete with Mariota for – to start. Just know this. Whoever they pick, it's not going to go well for their career. Even if they get it right, because yeah. you're just you're setting that quarterback up to fail between a bad. You got Kyle Pitts, and then pfft, nothing. They're, they're filling some blanks. I don't think it's going to be as bad. Does Arth obviously it came down to the wire for Deshaun Watson to join this team, and they have a they have a history there of, of being successful. So I think I think it will will think differently of the Falcons in a couple of months. Just give them a couple of months, and Jay. I think we will think differently of the Falcons in a couple of years. Okay, they'll just, be great. And then Sorry. Arthur Smith would then just get a, the chance to bench. Mariota again oh yeah, my god it, it is worth noting that this is a reuniting of Marcus Mariota with Arthur Smith they were together in uh Tennessee DJ Moore signed a new three-year 61 yeah. million dollar contract extension get the bag DJ yeah go pay your wide receivers you don't got a quarterback <laughs> uh Matthew Stafford cashed in it's the it this is almost like a requirement you win the Super Bowl you get an extension the coaches the GM yeah. the quarterback you all get paid Four years, $160 million contract extension. Uh, perhaps that changes the way you view the longevity of Stafford's dynasty value. Sure. Right? All right, let's take a quick break, then we'll get into the free agents. Well, there have been uh, a lot of other moves that aren't just trades and transactions, so let's talk free agent frenzy. Free agent frenzy. Well, let's talk about the Rams. Let's keep talking about the Rams. Allen Robinson signed to a three-year, forty-six million dollar deal. Sometimes teams are just in that category of like, how do they keep doing it? Like the Rams have paid names that are recognizable Agreed. over and over and over again, and they just have an unlimited Scrooge McDuck bank vault. So Allen Robinson. Three years, forty-six million. You talk about a way to rebound value. Put him in a position to be Robert Woods. Yeah. Well, yeah. That was and when the signing happened. It was holy crap. So now the Rams have Robert Woods, who is yes, he's coming off the ACL, but they'll have Robert Woods back. You have Cup Robinson. They say they are still trying to get Odo Beckham. So Robinson gets the bag of money, and then shortly thereafter, they did trade Robert Woods away to the to the Tennessee Titans. For a sixth round pick, the I mean, it's he just so, got replaced. It's so crazy that I get it. You know, he's older. His contract, he's so he comes over. You have to pay him money, but a sixth rounder for like the known commodity, like Robert Woods, is good. I you think the ACL draft at thirty, yeah, is it takes it from known commodity to unknown commodity. Uh, I I agree with that to some point, but ACL is such a standard operating procedure i mean right now like it, and granted it is older but i think i think half of the incoming wide receivers in this year's uh they've already you know, gotten one out of the way yeah like literally i i half of the guys that are going to be drafted in the first four rounds have had an acl tear already um it's a little bit more difficult at his age but Let's talk Allen Robinson. Yeah, Robinson's two years younger than Robert Woods. He's going to come into this situation. I do think they'll bring back him back. So it's likely going to be a Cooper Cup, 
Allen Robinson, Odell Beckham situation. That's not going to be easy beyond Van, Cup. Van Jefferson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I call him the uh, the Rams Gabe Davis. Um, what do you do? I mean, Cooper Cup, there's no un- there's no question marks around him. Right. Uh, you're not worried about Robinson coming in. They ship out Woods. Beckham's coming off an ACL. So they're willing to do that return from ACL. So the, the question is, is Robinson washed? Is it the que- No, the question what? is, did you draft Allen Robinson last year? <laughs> if you did, he's washed. You're, he is washed, and you're going to completely like I, my hands are my. I've washed my hands. Mm. I will not be drafting Allen Robinson. But that is illogical. That is just me being an angry, spiteful man because of what he did to my fantasy team last year. The reality is this is the perfect situation for Allen Robinson. He has a quarterback. A, he has a true franchise quarterback throwing him the ball. He has a an elite number one. Like Robinson doesn't even have to be the one in this offense. So he is in the perfect situation. Is he washed? I do the Rams I, don't I, think so. That's I don't, a guarantee. I don't, I don't think he is. Well, and, and there is a middle ground between washed and prime. And they, sure, you know, like Odell. Odell is not what he was, but he's also not washed. Let me ask you this question. Last year in fantasy drafts, Allen Robinson went with the 10th pick of the third round. Robert Woods went with the third pick of the fourth round. They were very close together. Does Allen Robinson go higher or lower than he did last year? Lower. Lower than he did last year. Does he go higher or lower than Robert Woods' value at 403? I think he will be drafted right there. If I have to pick, I'm guessing he will go higher because he's a bigger name and he got a lot of money in a major market and people will buy in. I will not draft him there. I think he is more of a fifth-round type of wide receiver to me. Um, this is a guy who's had so many good years. We don't know if he's still got it or not, but all of his good years have been over 150 targets. And that's just, that's not, he's not the one here anymore. Um, he's always been the alpha for his fantasy value. And maybe that can be tweaked and changed. And obviously Robert Woods was right behind Cooper cup in, in terms of, you know, pecking order. It wasn't like, uh, right, right, right. Cooper yeah. cup was 170 targets and Robert Woods was 105. So, to me, I think he's going to be okay. I'm not really going to jump through hoops to get someone that is okay. Let me ask you another question about where you would draft him. And by the way, I, I think he'll go lower than 403 because I think, I think they'll so bring too. Beckham back and there'll be ambiguity there. They also have Cam Akers to start the year, God willing. He's, he will go lower, but that is oozing with upside. Like If, if Allen Robinson still has it, he will be he will outproduce his ATP by a lot. It's possible, and it, it kind of it could be a situation like Jefferson Thielen, where they both have tremendous value, but one of them just is way down the ADP. Right. Another wide receiver is signed to a one year deal. The Chiefs signed Juju Smith Schuster, and so Juju departs from Pittsburgh. Do you like Juju's opportunity with Mahomes more or less than Allen Robinson's opportunity with Matthew Stafford? Less because there are two more important targets ahead of him. And even if they bring Odell Beckham back, I think Allen Robinson becomes the two in the pecking order, or, or at the at very least, least still November. at least he's tied with Beckham, whereas Juju is firmly behind Tyreek and Kelsey. He is the third in this offense. It's not a bad landing spot for him. He'll be a wide receiver three, and he will have fantasy relevance this year. He can have big games like Sammy Watkins had that one time, and um, <laughs> and some of the other, you know, you, Mahomes you saw, missed Watkins. He really did. Yeah, he did. I mean, you 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 saw with Hardman and Pringle, and you know they've been trying to figure out who that third is. I think it's a good move for the Chiefs, a good for Patrick Mahomes' value, and good for Juju. It's 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 good all the way around. But I don't think Juju has the opportunity as the three to be any kind of fantasy superstar. He's just going to be. Um, someone that I think will be more relevant than the Lizard King. Over under 70 receptions in, in Kansas City for Juju Smith-Schuster. By the way, in case you didn't catch it while you were on a boat, Byron Pringle did sign with the Bears. I actually did miss that one. Thank you. Yes. So you do not have Pringle there. I will take the over on the reception. So last year, McCole Hardman saw 13% of the 
targets. That was the second most at the wide receiver position. Pringle saw 9%. So I'm, and I'm not saying you all of that all of a sudden goes to Juju, but there is a world where Juju is sitting at like what 17, 18% of the targets and and then that will turn into he's a okay weekly start and then he'll have us like two to three spike weeks throughout the season. Yeah, yeah I think I'll take I think I'll take the over. I'm going to guess right around 75. So just smidge smidge more. All right. I do have uh some public sentiment regarding that total because I don't think people are as People are not that excited. Okay, no, they are the forty eight percent, sixty one to eighty receptions. So there you go. All right. Um eleven percent over eighty one receptions, thirty six percent below. It is a just absolutely wild world though, of just a, just a few years ago, Juju Smith Schuster was the next big thing. Dynasty in, startup drafts had his name as, at the very top. Yeah, the one oh one in a dynasty the startup next, draft. The next big thing at the wide receiver position and now has had two off seasons as a free agent and nobody wanted to sign him he went from a star is born to a star is poor <laughs> yeah i mean it, when it when it when it's born too fast it just goes supernova <laughs> and uh i mean it, what's crazy is and i know i've always been anti juju since that the value since that initial yep. explosion but even i went back the other day and like looked and it's like my it was like 111 receptions and 1,400 yes. yards. Like, I don't care. Like, How he's 25, but mm -hmm. no one wants him this offseason. People are willing to go pay Christian Kirk, who's never had a 1,000-yard season, $75 million. And then Juju's had – now he plays in the slot, but he's he's had a 1,400-yard season – and he, this contract originally got reported as $10 million. And I told Mike it reminded me of the... But it was not $10 million. No, it, it reminded me of the Alshon deal because I think he signed for like $10 million with yep. the Eagles for a year. No, it, it's a barely any money guaranteed to the point where you're like, if he really didn't have it, they could cut the dude. Yeah, one of the things that, Andy, you brought up as something to remember, lessons learned from this last year. And, and we've talked about... Look for all the analytic work we do, and every try to every edge we try to gain from this, that, and the other. The only really super predictive stat for future success is past success. Here's a 25 year old who has dominated on the NFL field before, going to Patrick Mahomes. So he's certainly someone that um, you know you you don't know health of Kelsey and Tyreek through the season, uh, you know. But that's when he succeeded. That's, it's a good point because when Ty, you got Tyreek here, one right. of the most dominant wide receivers. Juju was great because of Antonio Brown on the other side of the field. He is good at finding space and absorbing targets, and Kelsey and Tyreek will take all of that attention. Could this <clears throat> mark the beginning of, you know, we've talked in this offseason pretty negatively about the age that Travis Kelsey is getting to and the right. historical – dominance of the greatest tight ends of all time when they get to this point they add juju could this really mark a big step down for fantasy production for travis kelsey well let me ask I don't it know. A, let me ask it a different way do you think that travis kelsey will be drafted uh differently by you a spot or two he'll move down because juju is there or you're not factoring that in i i'm a non-factor yeah I, I wouldn't factor it into my decision of what i what i still believe travis kelsey can be but at the end of the season, I think that you're talking. There is a small percentage chance that Juju took way more away than you were planning on. The Titans they cut Julio Jones, they traded for Robert Woods, and they also signed Austin Hooper to a one-year, six million dollar contract. Could have been worse landing spots for Austin Hooper. He could have some occasional relevance here sure. in Tennessee. Yeah, and, and Robert Woods, this isn't the worst landing spot for him. I, I saw my timeline when Robert Woods was traded was like RIP. It was basically just put him in the grave. And I'm sitting here thinking Corey Davis was right a really good fantasy option um, as the two to A.J. Brown. They, they needed someone, and obviously Julio didn't get that done, but that was injury. Um, so if Robert Woods has enough left to just be a good, good wide receiver too, which I think he does. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. I think I don't think I'd go all the way to the RIP, but I think there's a very, very narrow type of the season has to go perfectly for Woods to be relevant. It's not, you know, he he had struggled a little bit. 
in the last couple of years in Los Angeles at times, especially for fantasy. So I do wonder if they saw a little bit of the back half of his career coming and then you compound it with an ACL and they just, I don't know. I, th I think it could go real bad. Yeah, it's it's no layup to be great, but I, I look at him as a veteran who has always um, been discounted, never been ex an exciting pick who I would expect to be sitting around the eighth round. Um, That's fair. And at that point, I think he's yeah. going to be a value for fantasy. And for the Titans, he's a good run blocker. Like, Yeah. He is, he's a good addition to the team. Jameis Winston, two-year deal. The Saints have re-signed their old friend. So it's who they wanted all along. <laughs> Come on, Javis. You were the only, we only had eyes for you. It's just, yeah, I, they missed out obviously on the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. They were favorites at, at one point last week. Implications for someone like Michael Thomas. Uh, it's not that Winston can't support him. He can, but if the offense, again, it's about what the offense wants to do. They're a great defensive football team. They have Alvin Kamara. So this is not going to be the old-fashioned uh, – I said this last year. It's not going to be the old-fashioned uh, Jameis in Tampa Bay. It wasn't that old-fashioned Jameis, but he was functional last year. In his, is that a compliment? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> he – Functional? I'm taking the, the game out where he tore the ACL, where he was he was 6 of 10 with a, with a touchdown, but only played about a quarter of the game. But so in those in those other six games – he was on a pace of, of 37 touchdowns. Now it was it was <laughs> not consistent cuz 5 had, 0 2 yes. 1 4 1 1 but and I'm not calling for Jameis to be a top 12 quarterback or anything like that but just I believe he will have value as a as a QB2 that you can get very late. It's worth noting that and granted they didn't have Michael Thomas there but Alvin Kamara had four of those six weeks was a top 10 running back. So this could have gone really poorly for Alvin yes, Kamara. This could, could have yeah. been a rookie signed coming in, and at least uh, Kamara belongs you know, in that first round still. Rashad Penny signed a one-year deal, $5.75 million. The end of the season for Rashad Penny was awesome. Yeah, I mean, yes, it, it was. was I'm yeah, champs. Championship. Yeah. 17 but, for 135, 25 for 170, 23 for 190, he had a very, very nice 2,800-yard pace over the last three weeks. <laughs> he was dominant, and the whispers from the bushes are he actually turned down more money Yes, for this one-year kind of approve-it deal. Uh, now Chris Carson will be back. Chris Carson's contract is completely manageable, and it's probably for the best for uh, these two players to have each other. Who gets As drafted first? Penny. Penny. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for, for upside. Yeah, I mean, and but okay, for upside, you swing for the fences and you take Rashad Penny yes. over Chris Carson. Who do you guys think scores more fantasy points and is the who's the leader here of the what will be a timeshare? Rashad Penny. I think it'll be Penny. I agree. Now, both of them will have to uh, take handoffs from not Russell Wilson. So that could be the the biggest problem. Best laid plans to be a run first team. If it's Drew Locke... Say the lock clock is ticking up yeah, there, Seattle. I mean... You're going to have a bad situation if you don't do something. And it might be Baker. And Baker could, you know... Baker can hand the ball off. Baker is better than Drew Locke. Yes. yes. <laughs> but the Seattle Seahawks offensive line is much worse than the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Also, also blank is better than Drew Locke. <laughs> uh, Cordero Mason Pat Rudolph? Hmm? Ooh, Ooh, I got you. Oh, man. I got you. Oh, man. Oh, Drew Locke's the, way better than Mason Rudolph. The Drew Locke, Mason, Mason Rudolph. Rudolph. You have to pick one. One oh. has to be your uh, your, 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 your quarterback for the year. Oh, my God. I will make him the quarterback for my life to avoid one season of Mason Rudolph. Yeah, look, I, Locke's better than Rudolph. I think Rudolph. I'd go Drew Locke. Drew Locke is at yeah. least likable. Wait a minute. Oh, dude. <laughs> Drew By Locke. comparison, yes. Drew By Locke. comparison to Mason Rudolph. Drew Locke on the, doing his, you know, dancing and rapping on the what side. A, that's not likable. Oh, uh, it's likable to me. It's likable to some people. It's also very punchable to other people. Oh, yeah. Y you can dance all you want if you aren't one of the worst quarterbacks in football. That's my policy. It is funny to think, like, let's say he did the exact same dance. We've all seen the videos. If you haven't, mm -hmm. do yourself a favor. 
Look it up, him just rapping and dancing on the sideline. Be careful. It'd be like, it's a lot of swag. No, it's a lot of swag. If he was a winner, right? Like, <laughs> like if Drew Locke was a good quarterback, right. and he does the exact 100% of course. Thing, same thing, it's like, that dude's awesome. Yeah. Love that guy. Instead, he's a loser. Which is appropriate. Yeah, and it's like, you shouldn't be dancing on the sideline when you suck. I'm sure that day he wasn't sucking yet. Oh, he was sucking. <laughs> If I don't remember what there it was, but I mean, I mean, if he had been, if he had the worst game and then was over there just now, I mean, Paxton Lynch set a high standard oh. on the swag dance moves in Denver, and maybe Goodness. he felt pressure. <laughs> Did Jason just do it? Uh, yeah, the, very the nice. Old Paxton Lynch pump fake on the dab. No, I mean Drew Lock is bad. So yeah. yeah, at the end, let's just make sure we that's where we're landing. Uh, Cordero Patterson, two year deal with the Falcons. Mike, what was your reaction to this deal? Patterson had. 11 touchdowns last year was a one of the biggest surprises of the fantasy football season because through the first nine weeks, this was a guy that was on pace for 80 receptions, 1,000 a, a yards receiving, 600 rushing, bunch of touchdowns, and no the, more Matt Ryan. And the team, like, there was a, a, a stretch there where, like, he got banged up and he missed a game. The team was way better when Cordero Patterson was the running back for this team, so I think that factored in. Is there a chance that he's the starter? Oh, I would lock that in. Really? Uh, yes. You don't think that they draft somebody and that's the I, – I don't think so. I guess you got other like, needs on that team. <laughs> I was going to say the trading Matt Ryan away seems like a bigger boost to Patterson, them just rolling with him being the guy because you can't spend a day two pick on a running back when you have to rebuild your entire team. Yeah. Like that you, would just it's not that they it's not that they can't and general managers have done stupid stuff like this before. I'm just I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt saying I don't think that they will spend a day two pick on a running back. And if they don't, then it doesn't matter they can draft a running back in the fourth or the fifth. That's fine. They will play behind Patterson. Mike Davis is currently still under contract. And they, is he and really? He is under and contract. Damian Williams was signed. Um, but he only uh, his dead cap is seven hundred fifty thousand. Uh, granted, his salary is only like three million, but they could save a couple million if they move on, and they could get better on the field. I would, so it's like a win-win. <laughs> well, I, but you got to remember, like uh, Patterson was great because of receptions. If he's just rushing the football, his ceiling ends up being twelve to twenty on a weekly basis. Not so much top 10 potential because in the back half of the year, you had, you know, 16 for 58 and a touchdown. That's good enough for 15 on the week because he only caught two passes. So, you know, that beginning of the year where he had some top five finishes, not as likely if they do rebuild that core. And, and look, you can't play wide receiver and running back on every play. So that's what Mike Davis was doing. He was, he was lining up being bad in the backfield and they throw the ball to Patterson and it helped the fantasy value. Yeah, I mean if you have Cordero Patterson in a dynasty league, you're very happy about this. I was now, very happy about it. Now this. you have a little bit of uh, serviceability from someone in your second flex position. I don't expect him I mean he was a top ten running back this year. That's not in the cards. He had eleven touchdowns this current you know uh, season and, and that's just not gonna happen with a question mark at well I guess it's Marcus Mariota right at, at quarterback that's not going to give you the same scoring opportunities you're hoping he gets goal line for uh, of, of all the most valuable Believe opportunities is giving him the goal line and I'm happy for him I mean talk about a career yeah. renewal at this age he played great last year mm -hmm. also, he did everything he could do on a team in which that wasn't nearly enough <laughs> very fun follow on Twitter he, is he? Yes, he has some very funny tweets. He uh, recently too, right? Yeah, I mean, just like he, the man was overjoyed when he re-signed with Atlanta, and he was sharing that with you yeah. know, some very, very uh, colorful with, language. Yeah. But it's just it was like the guy cares, like, and that that felt good. And then after the Matt Ryan trade, he like he tweeted out the the commercial of the the kid warming up his arm and Patterson inferring that he's going to have to play some quarterback. This just seems like a fun guy. I'm going to. Read you some names, and we're going to play a game of Do You Care? Okay. All right? I love to it. To close this out. Some other signings. Falcons signed Damian Williams. Do you care? Nope. Mm, only if he starts taking Patterson's receptions. The Packers re-signed Robert Tunyon to a one-year deal after the bad injury last year. Nope. Uh, I care. Okay. Robert Tunyon can catch touchdowns, and Devontae Adams and his touchdowns okay. are no longer there. So Mike cares. Jason doesn't care. Gerald Everett. 
two year deal with the Chargers. Yes. I wish I didn't care. I care a lot. I, I wish actually I do. Didn't Eight care. million guaranteed. I'm, I'm, Did you know that he was on our waiver wire this morning in our dynasty league? No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Was meaning you got him? I did not. Oh Brooksy. my goodness! Oh, that's Brooksy Bro- got him. Oh, <laughs> it's un- it's un- How that's was he unbelievable. There? How I, you don't look for someone like that because you just assume he's rostered. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, I mean this is this is the best case. I'm not saying that Gerald Everett is going to be a great fantasy option next year, but this is the like far and away the best case scenario for him. His, you what know, if I told you he had five top 12 weeks last year? Yes. Would a, you feel like he had five top five n- weeks last year? No, but that's because he was on a run first team with an injured quarterback for half of the year. No, I'm saying that as a surprise I, in a good way. That's what I mean. Yeah. But it didn't, it didn't feel like that. But he, was, he is not a bad player. He is good. Now he goes to Herbert, who has made a lot of fantasy relevance out of 31-year-old Jared Cook and Donald What's that again? J- Jared Cook and Donald Parham. I mean, Gerald Everett could actually be a really important fantasy option here. He could now, also split time with Parham and be absolutely, irrelevant. Absolutely, absolutely. What I want to again, going back to the 10 things to remember, one of my things to remember was that all tight ends suck and there's always hope in all these middling tight ends that none of them will pan out. So, he won't. But uh, for <laughs> DFS, you know, maybe, yeah. you're, maybe you're not, you know, necessarily looking to draft him and ride him all season, but you're going to have matchups here where Gerald Everett has two touchdowns in a game because Herbert's slinging it around, and I, I, I really love this. That's What's funny is when I saw the tweet, I, pretty sure I was on a boat, and I saw that he was going back. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that he was going back to Los Angeles. You figured he was going back to. And so uh, I was like, "Oh, that's that's weird." I, I I'm surprised he went back to the Rams, but okay. And then it was like two days later when I'm like, "Oh, he, all right. he has not everything you're you're hoping for for a fantasy breakout tight end, but he has elite athleticism." And Justin Herbert is a quarterback who could throw forty plus touchdowns in a season. So he, do you feel is significantly different about him? Compared to the conversation we had last year when Cook signed, uh, or do you feel about the same? I feel, no, I, I feel different because he's he'll be turning twenty eight pretty soon. But like he's in his prime, where Jared Cook at that point was already just like a skilled football player, but not the athlete that Everett is currently. I feel, I feel about that better part. Go ahead. about Everett than I did about Cook. And the best part about that is, I think Everett's uh, you, however many years long disappointment of the fantasy community people have believed in him in all these different destinations he's he's disappointed everyone that's that's going to be felt and realized in the draft cost i don't believe that he will be one of these seventh eighth round tight ends because of this landing spot he's going to be one where he'll you be undrafted can, exactly you can grab yeah. him as your last guy and yeah, i'm happy with that um he remember he had that stretch of games last year where out of nowhere he just started getting the ball thrown to him he had like a seven game stretch where he's averaging yeah. like He's on 70-plus reception pace. All right, do you care about Boston Scott, one-year deal, 1.75 to the Eagles? Nope. Do you care about Matt Breida, one-year deal with the Giants? Nope. No. Duke Johnson, one-year deal with the Bills? It's uh, not really. Maybe. I, I, he's not as impactful, I believe, to Singletary as like if J.D. McKissick had actually signed the contract to be a Buffalo Bill. But Duke Johnson is just... <laughs> It's like hanging around. It's so many years of oh, this like Duke Johnson could finally, oh, finally. I, no, I'm, I'm saying that that's been like the sentiment of people wanted Duke Johnson to work out. Like he was, he was a uh, like a hot prospect for Dynasty. You just kept waiting and waiting and waiting, and I think you will continue to wait. Um, the only other piece of news. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you talked about it last week or if this was newer. Uh, I didn't listen. Subscribe. I didn't. Well, I was on a boat. Yeah. So uh, I didn't listen. Um, but uh, Cole Beasley getting cut. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie. Uh, he he is to me at least someone that if if you play in dynasty leagues, I would look and see if he's on the waivers because sure. else, everything has been made about. Oh, it's Gabe Davis's time to shine, or will he, or won't he, or blah blah blah. And nobody talks to Isaiah McKenzie. He hasn't done much. He's been more of a special teamer. But in the few opportunities he's had without Cole Beasley, he's dominated. 
Uh, he's the same like size weight, and so it made know. him expendable. Made Beasley expendable, and we didn't talk a lot about or any about Isaiah McKenzie fallout. I think hmm. so. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. It's pretty important. He he was outstanding, right? In that small stretch last year, he, he had the twelve one... catches for. I'm sorry, eleven for one twenty five against. All right, it was one game. It was one game, but it was two. It was back to back years where when Cole Beasley missed the game, the year prior was uh, nine targets. Uh, two touchdowns, 65 yards. So he, he can fill in. And so it's just one of those. I'm talking dynasty. Well, and he dive. signed, to be clear, he signed a two-year extension. Yeah. So it was like they cut Beasley and signed him. It sounds like it's a move to say, hey, we're comfortable with you in this role now. And uh, Cole Beasley still needs a team, right? Correct. That is correct. And there's, there's, quite, there's still a handful. Of Will Fuller, Julio Jones. Leonard Fournette. Freaking visiting the New England was it was it a yes. visit or was it just rumors? <laughs> no, it, was, it was a visit a, to the Patriots. Oh man, I I want it to happen. I want it to happen. <laughs> I mean, that is just, just burn the world down. That's all it is. That's all it is. I mean, James it would, White, Ramondre, Damian Harris, Leonard Fournette. Fournette. You're immediately crushing four players' fantasy value. It would make no sense. It's unnecessary. I don't understand it. L just let it let it happen. <laughs> oh man. That's our only hope on that team from a fantasy perspective is the backfield. Yeah. Saying, hey, we can wrap our heads around this a little bit. And but and also I want Brees Hall to go to Tampa. So <laughs> I see. Yeah. I see. Do you have the first pick in a dynasty draft coming up? I traded for it and I got it. I'm excited. I love my man Brees. We actually confiscated it while you were on the boat. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for today's show. Good to be back together. Indeed it Let's is. Let's do another show on Thursday. How's that? Okay. All Goodbye. Right. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.